Welcome in, everyone. I am uh, Maria from Watertown, one of the hosts of Bruins uh, Tape to Tape. And as we uh, chatted about at our season ending episode, we said that we would convene when there was uh, news broken by our Boston Bruins. And we do expect there to be an ample amount of news uh, to be broken by the Bruins with um, having to do some retooling in the off season. And now that the Stanley Cup finals are over and done with, we should see a good amount of activity, not only from the Bruins, but by other teams in the league. And I'm going to welcome in my ever so popular and yeah. knowledgeable co-host, <laughs> Caroline with a K. We're Indeed. recording on a June 25th and just very quickly, I know you and I may share similar sentiments with regard to the crowning of the Stanley Cup. So normally we would be bigger people and <laughs> offer congratulations, <laughs> but I myself don't feel like being a bigger person and offering congratulations. I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah, I, uh, I don't love it. Uh, I, as you know, I have a long-standing personal tradition of always watching the presentation of the cup. It's one of my favorite things to see. It's a beautiful tradition. Uh, and I did not watch it last night. I, I could not face seeing Matthew Kachuk, uh, raise the cup. I did end up watching a little bit of the presentation this morning with Gary Bettman handing off the cup to Barkov because my daughter um, really, really wanted to see it. So I said, all right, I'll take one for the team and I'll watch him give it just to Barkov. That's it. <laughs> and so I did see that. Um, but I will say, and I know we're going to, we're about to dive right into it. Um, how about those Boston Bruins announcing 13 minutes to eight, their significant trade news. It's akin to going to a wedding and telling people you're pregnant. <laughs> it was it was a little bit on the bizarre side. And I thought out of an abundance of maybe um, <laughs> courtesy <laughs> to letting the game play out and see who the Stanley uh, Cup champion was. You might want to wait on this news, but oh well. I mean, you know, no. I know there's no written rule. I know there was some discussion <laughs> about that and there is no written rule about it, but uh -huh. I, yeah, it was a little bit of a head a little bit of a head scratcher and yep. maybe they wanted the announcement to come out formally knowing that there was a deal done before it was broken. Yeah. by others who should not be breaking the news. I don't I don't know, but I just thought yeah. it was yeah, a little bit weird <laughs> to say the least. That was 100% not an accident. Um you you have you're absolutely right. There had to be a reason whether it was for some reason they would think that someone else was going to break the news, although quite frankly literally every person in the hockey sports media industry was watching and getting ready for the game. Um, I mean, I like to think that perhaps this was them slipping it in to spite, I don't know, Florida a tiny bit. That or would, they hit yeah, it because they didn't I want like it to be. Yeah. I like that narrative, but I also, I, like uh, I, 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 I follow uh, this PR uh, guru woman, Molly McPherson on social media, and she's brilliant. And she uh, talks about how you slip in things like on a Friday afternoon, especially in the summer, if you don't want a ton of attention. And who knows, maybe they did it also because they didn't want a ton of attention on it because, and we'll talk about it. I don't think what we've seen is the entire story. So, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Yes. And we're going to get to that because, <laughs> you know, that's the big news. I'm sure most of you who listen to our pod, who are hockey fans, know what we're referring to. Um, with respect to the big news, mm -hmm. but it, there, there are some, there were some other pieces, smaller pieces of news mm -hmm. um, by the Boston Bruins recently. One of which is they signed Brandon Bussey to a one-year, two-way 
contract at, at league minimum. Mm-hmm. Same thing for Ian Mitchell, one year, two way at league minimum. And then we had a new coach added mm-hmm. to the Bruins mix where they added uh, Jay Leach to the Boston Bruins coaching staff, who I think if what I'm reading is accurate, is going to focus on the defensive structure of the team. Which, yeah. I mean, I thought it was pretty – well, I should I should walk that back. It, it's yeah. not the same defensive structure that we have been accustomed to. We saw yeah. snippets of it during mm-hmm. the regular season, but um, for the most part, that was an area of – concern for the Boston Bruins were mm-hmm. some of the defensive breakdowns that led to some really questionable decision making by not only the defensemen by but also by forwards who were tasked mm-hmm. with defensive responsibilities. So um but I think the big tip off in terms of our big big news was the Brandon Bussey signing. I, I think that was a way mm-hmm of, you know, laying down the foundation to what we all suspected was coming, rightfully likely needed to come in order for Mm -hmm. this team to start moving forward in finding some and filling some key roles that need Mm -hmm. to be filled. And that is the trading of Linus Omar. Yep. That was Certainly uh, not unexpected. I think we all saw the writing on the wall. I I would say it's interesting that they traded within division. I know that there are a lot of folks who think, you know, you should never trade any position whatsoever within the division. There are other folks who say, well, you can trade but not a goalie because goalies are the difference maker. Um, And here we are, the Boston Bruins sending Linus Allmark to Ottawa. So I thought that that was the only piece that I thought was really interesting because when the news broke that the GM from Ottawa was on the phone with John Sweeney, I thought, eh, surely they're not going to do a deal with Ottawa. Like it's a little too close to home. Um, and who knows what, who knows what else was going on? Who knows who else maybe gave a phone call? You know, we know that New Jersey was in the market for goaltending and they kind of settled their situation. Um, I believe it was last week in their trade with Calgary for Markstrom. Um, so and and there was a little bit of chatter around Carolina. So it was the only piece for me that was a surprise was the fact that it it ended up with Ottawa. I just I didn't think that that was actually going to be the team. I don't know. And probably coming I, I, from that long term traditional thinking of you just don't right you know right as the right. old commercial used to say you don't date within the division so within the division right right <laughs> and you know it's it's. I think there's two ways of looking at it, right? Because, yep. we, you know, we've all heard about Linus's no trade clause mm-hmm. and it was going to drop to 15, 15. Yep. Come July 1st. Yes. Yep. So without really- disparaging the Ottawa Senators franchise, yeah, I would think that Ottawa would have been one of the teams on that no trade list. Yeah. But yeah, when they have you a reputation. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Well, the ownership there is not the most, the most stable, right? Right. Um, yeah, we had our own but, critique for for that team last year. Now, granted, it was new ownership; they don't seem to really know what they're doing. Um, so, you know, that first year, maybe we can be a little forgiving. But so, before we kind of go into some of the our opinions. Let's real quick just run down what the run down trade what the trade was was. So they um, sending Bruins are sending Linus Olmark to Ottawa, presumably to be their number one goalie, um, and 
In return, the Bruins receive a player by the name of Mark Kastelik, age 25. Um, you know, not, not a game changer in my mind, but someone who could likely develop into, you know, a solid fourth line player. And he's not making a ton of money. No, not making a ton not. of money. No. The Bruins are also getting a number one, Ottawa's number one draft pick in the 2024, 2025 draft. So for everyone who was biting their fingernails and aggravated oh, over the oh, fact oh. that, you know, the Bruins were going to be yep. without a first round draft pick for a period of time. Here mm -hmm. you go. You've I think it's actually, draft pick. there's, it's Ottawa's second draft pick in the first round. In the first round. Yeah, I think it lands them around 24, 25. Which, which is better than? I believe that was what David Posternock was drafted at back in the correct. day. So Correct, correct. <laughs> so you never know. You never know. But the, 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 the one return that is causing some agita amongst Bruins yes. fans yes. is the goaltender from Ottawa, yeah. Jonas Corposalo. Which I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding what, yeah. what everyone's all worked up about. Maybe you can help me understand. So yeah. I get it. He, he's, he's owed some money, right? And it's an, the Bruins have him for an additional three years on his mm -hmm. current contract, which is what, $4 million? I believe. He, so he current, so what he has left is. What he has left. He's got three years with three million, a AAV. Three million AAV cap hit. Yep. Now, so, Ottawa's and retaining 25% of that. And yep. I know his numbers haven't looked good, mm -hmm. but, you know, that can be a combination of a bunch of different things. You know, yes. Ottawa has been in, like, maybe a rebuild state for how many years now? They have mm -hmm. very young, unseasoned, unproven not a lot of experience players mm -hmm. which you know doesn't lend itself to an ideal set of circumstances sometimes for a goal mm -hmm. yep yeah i think you know I'm, I'm not gonna lie i will be transparent i think my initial reaction was really <laughs> i and even before this particular trade, his name had come up, I'm sure, in either an article that I'd read online or in a podcast that I was listening to. He's an interesting one um, because so he signed a free agent, a free agency deal uh, in Ottawa last year. He voluntarily went to Ottawa last year um, after having spent um the 22 23 season playing for essentially three teams. Granted, he was down in the AHL for a single game. He did um, 11 games in LA. Um, and then he did the remaining uh, set of games that he played, uh, which were 28 in Columbus, which in Columbus, oddly yeah. enough, he was in Columbus prior to that. I'm, I'm thinking and correct me if I'm wrong. I'm now thinking this on the fly, so I could be entirely wrong, but I think was he involved in that weird uh, Jonathan Quick flip when he went from uh, L.A. to Columbus and then Quick almost immediately got flipped and, and Quick went to Las Vegas? And is that how uh, Rosalo ended up back in Columbus? I don't know. I'm just thinking that's coming to my mind and I could be entirely wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm sure um, you're right. Your mind because is a hell of a lot younger than mine. <laughs> because he went from the 21-22 season playing for Columbus. The following year, he played for a little bit for LA, and then went back to Columbus. Um, but anyways, so he he had a he had pretty decent stats out in LA. Um, granted, it was only 11 games, but he had a 2.13 goals against average, 92 save percentage. Um, and he did okay in Columbus um, in 22-23. He had almost a 92 safe percentage, although his goals against average kind of tipped over the three-goal mark, which you don't really love to see. Um, and I think for him, you know, he, 
I think was a victim of a situation. You know, we've complained multiple times on this podcast about what we see when we watch the Ottawa Senators play. Um, and I think he was just kind of set up to fail um, in that situation. You know, he's not um, he's not a super young guy, but he's not an older veteran just yet. I think he's maybe he's 30. So, he's 30. so yeah. you know, he's kind of in this weird spot. It's right around the time when goalies are starting to hit their stride in terms of their capability and everything. But and I can't believe I'm about to say this because if me five years ago heard me say this today, I'd be like, what is wrong with you? I have learned over the last five years watching this team, Bruins front office, specifically, you know, Don Sweeney and the players that he brings in. I have to trust the process and I can't believe I'm saying this because no, because there was a time where oh, you, you couldn't, couldn't trust, trust the process, right? You couldn't, no. but a perfect example of the reason why I'm going to trust the process is Linus Allmark. He is the evidence to me to trust that process because first of all, before Linus came to Boston, I had no idea who he was. Really, he played for Buffalo. Um, and we knew he saw he, a ton of rubber. Like, yeah, and he didn't have a good team in front of him. Right. And right. he wasn't anything spectacular, right? They bring him to Boston because they see something in him that, you know, whoever it is, maybe it's goalie Bob who has that magical eyesight when it comes to these goaltenders. But for Linus Allmark to go from a career where let's see I'm 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 looking him up his last couple of years right now but to go from a career in buffalo to within 2 years winning the vezina is is pretty amazing if you think about it right um so there's got to be something there there has to be a reason why there, the the Bruins wanted this guy. Um, there just has to be. So I'm going to have to trust the process. And the other thing is, I don't think we've seen everything. I think, and and I don't know why. Like I don't have any special knowledge or or anything. But in trusting the process, I'm understanding that just because we saw this particular trade happen last night doesn't mean that that's the whole story because we've got still what's today, Tuesday, we've still got the better part of a week before free agency happens. Mm -hmm. And that's a long time. It's a very, very mm -hmm. busy week for the NHL um, because they've got their uh, Ho hockey hall of fame uh, made their announcement today. The Board of Governors is meeting. You've got your buyout deadline. You've got the draft. You have well, two days of the draft. And then you've got your RFA and UFA day next Monday. So I think we've only seen a tiny bit of what's happening. And yes, initially, I felt that the Senators were the ones who got to walk away with a win and the Bruins walked away with, an, with a loss. But I wouldn't be surprised based on what I've seen with even Allmark's development that, that the Bruins walk away actually the winners. Because what we don't know is how good is Linus without uh, goalie Bob training? Because we know he's a pretty key piece. And how good is Linus when he doesn't have that defensive structure in front of him even one that's what we're we're not calling broken but needs a little bit of a tune-up and a little bit of a tweaking because we no longer have you know defensive forwards like Patrice and so on um they were still better than Ottawa yes. <laughs> so well and how how is that going to impact him because he's 
presumably Linus is going to Ottawa to be the guy to be yes. the yes. number one goalie. Mm -hmm. And so his workload yeah. is going to jump dramatically. And how yes. will that play out for him in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, all of the variables that you just talked about, right? The, yeah. you know, not the same defensive structure, maybe not the same coaching, not being over to look over at the bench and know that, you know, his friend, Jeremy Swayman mm -hmm. is there mm -hmm. that he mm -hmm. only has to handle half the workload. So, yeah, you know, I'm, this, this was the first chess piece that yes. Don Sweeney needed yeah. to move mm -hmm. in order to get yeah. to the, to a potential crowning moment which is to fill a big void that this team still has. Yeah. And, and to me, me, just my opinion, it's a priority yes. to go and get a true center and playmaker that at a minimum can play with pasta. Yes. That is, to me, a significant priority in mm -hmm. this offseason. And, you know, this is something we all knew needed to happen. Mm -hmm. Fans and, and some, you know, of our local sports talk show pundits demanding that the Bruins trade Linus Elmark. They should have traded him in the offseason last year. They should have traded him at the deadline. You know what? It's very easy to mm -hmm. be able to say could have, would have, should have. Right. But you have no trade right. clauses. You have... The lack of a market. The cap for, space. Everybody the was in the same space, position. Right? Yeah. And guess yeah. what, people? We all know as fans that the Bruins needed to tra trade one of these goalies. Guess yeah. who else knew? The rest of the friggin' league and the GMs yeah. uh -huh. that are responsible for managing their teams. And if yeah. you think that another GM is going to go to Don Sweeney and say, yeah, tell me what you want. You can have whatever you want. Just give me yeah. this. You're all crazy. Yeah. 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 So it's, I'm excited for this coming week. I think there's going to be some really interesting things that happen. Um, are we going to miss Linus? Are we grateful? Yeah, I mean, what, yes, we are. Of course. Right. Of course. We're all going to miss the yeah. hug. We're so we're we're, all, we're, right. we're mourning the hug as much as we are the loss but of a goaltender. It's, it's it's Swayman's time. Yes, he showed that he's capable yep. mm -hmm. to be to be that guy. You've yep. got to sign this kid because you can't risk having him take you back to arbitration because you would potentially lose big. Yeah, and you got yourself a little bit extra money freed yeah. up to add to the cap space that you already have to yep. either sign some of the free agents that you currently mm -hmm. have sitting on your roster or go out and get yourself some other, some other players at this point in time. And, yeah. you know, we're, we're going to do our full deep dive free agency podcast. I believe next week. Yep. Um, I think by, I would assume in one week, I mean, we're going to know on Monday, the fates of Matt Grizzlick, Kevin Shattenkirk, JVR, and Jake, Jake DeBrus. DeBrus. We're going to know yeah. all four on Monday. No question in my mind. There's no way that, that it's going to take even a day. Uh, I don't know what time I, th I want to say it like, noon i don't know why it sticks in my mind as noon yeah. but uh at 1201 we're gonna know their futures and you know in in the previous pod um when mo was on the show and we were talking about you know some of these other players um jake debrusque is the, is the really big question mark and I almost said this on the pod last time uh, and I didn't say it because I was like, well, that's a little cliche, but then it just kept coming up. And so I'm just going to say it that he's one of those players where uh, I might not necessarily think he's the right one, but I don't want anyone else to have him because <laughs> I'm afraid that there is still something there that 
Well, we've well, seen it. And we've, we've seen, seen it. it. Yes. Yeah. We just haven't seen it consistently enough. And right. we, we, we've discussed this. My views on Jake are <laughs> how long must we wait? Yes. Because the streakiness. Yeah. And, and to me, I thought that this year, knowing you were going into a year where this is a prove it, right. prove it year. And I'm not sure that he proved it. Not to me anyways, maybe to yeah. others, but he didn't prove it to me. Yeah. Well, and I think it's one, it could possibly also be one of those situations where the Bruins and, or the fan base is asking him to fulfill a role that maybe he's not naturally inclined and he's more inclined to this other role. Um, and I, and I say that and because I think I was more so convinced that I want him to stay in Boston, not for like crazy money. Like don't, don't think that I'm saying like this man deserves an insane pay raise by any means necessarily, but I think I would rather have him on my team than not um, because I recently um, published a blog post. I did a little bit of a deep dive in some of his um, statistics. Yes, you and, did. Well done. Well done. And, yeah. and player usage and this idea of, you know, looking at uh, how, mu how many minutes a player plays in the year compared to his teammates and compared to the other players in the league. And I was honestly surprised but he had a pretty significant uptick in the minutes that he played. And so, he, and he was playing a lot of really, really tough minutes. He was playing against a, a higher level of competition. And the conversation kind of came out of this in the discord when I presented my findings as I was, I was stunned. I was like, wow, I didn't realize how much time he played and how how hard the competition was when he was playing. And maybe it's just one of those situations now actually where it's sort of an illusion that it seems like he didn't do as much or didn't do as well. But in reality, because he played so much more and he played against a stronger competition it kind of washes out and doesn't seem like it was as impactful or as effective. But I believe uh, off the top of my head, you know, he was a top player in like top five in rush attempts across the league. Um, you know, his uh, he still exceeded expectations when it came to predicted goals based on how much he was being used. Um, he was he was doing a lot better, I think, than we realized. It just didn't look as impactful because he was out there that much more, yeah. right? If you're only out there for 10 minutes and you score 10 goals, it's going to be amazing. If you're out there for 100 minutes and you score 10 goals, it's going to look like you suck. But you still scored 10 goals. That's not a bad thing, right? And I think right, that's right. what we saw. And I think a lot of his efforts and the things that he did and contributed to the team got washed out by the fact that he played so much more. Like I'm talking 200 more minutes than he did the previous year. Like that's well, a and, lot of time. And, and to, and to your point, they gave him more responsibility. You know, he, he had time yep. on the penalty kill. He had time yep. on the power play. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to so have think, a button there, but yeah. to me, I expected him to be that 20 plus goals for her. Right. Yeah. And he didn't yeah. meet that expectation. Now I believe as, as you believe and your statistics point out that the Bruins see value in a hundred percent. And yes. I, they, they see value in him. It's just a question of money. What the numbers are yeah. like what yep. the Bruins value him at and perhaps what Jake and his agent yeah value yep. him at and that's where I think there might be a little bit of a disconnect. Yeah. I, I hope the first piece of news we see early next week is Jeremy Swayman's contract extension. Yes. Like just get that done. Just get yeah. that done. And maybe it's you know maybe there's an agreement in principle. It's not yeah. in writing. 
yet. And, um, you know, because this is why you did this with Linus, presumably, mm -hmm. was. Yes, I think they they probably financially, like logistically, could not have a contract signed with Linus still there. I wouldn't be surprised right. if that was the deal, right, financially. Um, you know, I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing, but the RFA sheets are due on the same day as UFA free agency this year. And so the clock is ticking on, um, uh, on, on Swayman. Like, I believe they have to have, they, their, their offer is due on Monday to him. Uh, so uh, we'll see. Yeah, we'll we'll see. see. I'm going to put my guess out there. I'm going to say, I think I said it last week, but this is going to be my formal guess. I'm going to go eight for eight. Whoa, that's a big number. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> that's a big number. That, yeah. that, that scares me a little bit. That scares me a little bit. I know he's young. I yep. know he's young. Um, yeah. But the money I mean, and the term when it comes to goalies – makes me, I mean, any eight year term yeah. makes me a little, fair, 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 a, fair. a little uncomfortable, a little uncomfortable, but particularly yeah. so with, with goaltenders. So um, that, yeah. that will be interesting to see what number he comes in as, you know, I, it yeah. sounds a little high to me, but we'll see what, what the Bruins think. Um, the only thing I I'm I feel more confident about the dollar amount than the years um, in looking at how the Bruins handled Charlie McAvoy. Um, I see them potentially following how they, you know, dealt with him um, prior to his big big contract extension a couple of years ago. So I wouldn't be surprised if they gave him terms like that for maybe a tiny bit less. Um, and if that's the case then his first UFA contract extension, assuming all goes well, will yeah. be a massive goaltending uh, contract. I think he, he's, he's, he's going to earn a lot of money. And I think the Bruins are reliable enough to say, we want to invest in our young players and this is our future and we're putting our franchise in his hands. And they do that from time to time. They've done that. Um, so I don't think that that's out of character, but so I'm it's interesting. For him. I, I just looked up, you know, because I was curious when you threw out the 8 million number. So I just looked up highest paid goalies in the league currently. Um, yep. Yeah. We talked about this in our last pod while you were busy oh, you becoming a grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Congratulations to my son. Of course. And, daughter -in -law and you and you. Our first. Our first, uh, our first grandchild, a beautiful little baby girl, yay. Juliet Mary. So yay! Um, Future hockey, hockey wasn't right at there. the. Pool. Oh God, are you kidding me? As <laughs> soon as that little girl walks, she's going to be fitted for skates. <laughs> phenomenal, phenomenal. But um, so, based on your eight million eight years, so right mm -hmm. right now, um, Sergei Bobrovsky mm -hmm. is making ten million. Jeremy's and, better than him. <laughs> Andre Vasilevsky is at nine and a half million. Yep. He's a the little next, better last year, not so much, but yep. The next one on the list is uh, Connor Hellebuck at eight and a half million. Mm -hmm. So maybe your eight million isn't too far off the. I think they're on yikes. par. Yeah. yeah. Yep. The big one, and like, again, this is kind of going off on a tangent. Where is um, Sturkin? So he's. Enough, He's only at, he's not even at 6 million. I know, but he's, I believe about either this year or next year about to hit free agency. And he's going right. to, he's yes. going to set, he's, he's going to set the bar yeah. because he's he gonna, is, he's going to, yeah. yeah, he's going to probably go into uh carry price territory. <laughs> so your number is likely very much in line with the top goalies or the top paid goalies. Yep. Um, in, in, in the league. So yep. I'm putting it out there. Ah! <laughs> all right. All right. I'll give you your flowers when you're right. <laughs> uh, we'll find out in less than a week. 
we will. So, we'll have a lot more to talk about, but I think yes. we wanted to just kind of summarize what okay. happened with Linus. Um, yep. the, the experts, and when I refer to experts, I'm not talking about you or I. Ah. I'm talking about people like, you know, Andrew Raycroft and, you know, people at ESPN or NHL Network mm -hmm. who are giving Don Sweeney credit yep. for this, this trade. Yeah. Right. Everybody wants to win every deal. That's not how the real world works, people. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to look at what your plan ahead is. And if this is a means, and we all knew that mm -hmm. this was the potential means to get to the next step, which mm -hmm. is signing Swayman. And for those, for everybody who hated the goalie rotation, guess what? You should all be doing a happy dance because there will be likely no more goalie rotation moving forward Yeah, with the Boston yeah. Bruins for the foreseeable future. Right. Yep. Yeah. I think this is a perfect example of buying a fixer upper house and turning it into something that's truly amazing. And like I said, I can't believe I'm saying this. I am trusting the process that the team that, Don Sweeney is building is only going to get better, even if we might not necessarily see the return immediately, like today. Um, I, I, we got to trust it. So we'll I, see. I I'm excited for you. next week. I'm excited, I'm for, excited next week. for next week. Um, we'll see what, what the next domino. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I don't want to say domino to fall because this is all about, you know, positive approaches yes. for the Bruins. Yep. So, you know, we'll see what the next move, mm -hmm. what the next like said, move. It's is. a chess Our game. Tweeny. Right. It's a chess right. game. Yeah. Right. Yep. And if, if the ultimate result is, you know, when training camp opens in September, mm -hmm. that we have a, you know, we have Jeremy Swayman for the mm -hmm. foreseeable future as yep. your number one guy, you have a proven at least one proven center to start the season and maybe hopefully even a second yeah. center. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, until next week, everybody keep their eyes and ears open because it's going to be is wild. A fun time of the year. It's going to be a fun <laughs> time of the year. So yeah, we'll be back uh, in a week to kind of debrief what happens on the first, but as always, go Bruins. Go Bruins. Stay cool, everyone.